Welcome everyone to Juno Tips and Tricks File Manager as we continue our Juno webinar series. Thank you for joining us today. Let's introduce our presenters, uh, the same two folks that have presented on these other webinars. So they'll be familiar to you if you've paid attention to any of the previous webinars. Let's begin with Justine Taylor, the Low Vision Product Manager at APH. And also Mike Woods, Strategic Accounts Manager Education for Vispero. Glad to have both of them with us again today as we go through this file manager on Juno. Let's talk about our learning objectives. We're going to discover how to name files with the Juno. We'll examine supported file types. We'll analyze storing files importing and exporting files using a USB-C flash drive, deleting files and copying Juno files onto the computer and from the computer to Juno using the USB cable. So a lot of stuff with getting files moved and doing all the things you need to do with those files. Now some challenges, um, recognizing what your file is named after saving it. Uh, if, if you don't do that, you're gonna have a lot of numbers and things and uh, it might be difficult to know exactly what that correct file is. Uh, determining what folder to put specific file types into, that can also be a challenge. Uh, locating files in the file manager, if you're not familiar with that, that's gonna take some learning and could be difficult at first. How to best manage your files by naming, editing, and deleting files. Sounds like stuff we do on our computers all the time, and so we just need to learn the process with the Juno. Knowing how much storage is available, and then transferring files US, using a USB-C flash drive versus the USB cable. So uh, we'll learn all about all those things today as we get going with the file manager. And let's get started with Justine. Thanks, Paul. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, so we're gonna start with um, how do we get to the file manager? So <laughs> um, after you have uh, captured and saved an image, um, which we have gone over in previous webinars, so we're not gonna be showing that today, um, but once you you have pressed that capture button and you you have the document um, that you would like, um, you can save it. And then that's going to go into uh, the file manager at that point. And it's going to be saved in Juno's files. Um, so to access um, and manage Juno's files, um, from the file manager screen, you're going, going to tap the restore button in the bottom left corner, and that's going to open up your, your button bars on the side, and then you'll go to the main menu um, from there, and then you'll tap on the file manager button, which is the, the file folder icon in the top left um, corner of the screen. So that is how you get to the file uh, manager where you can access um, all the files. And so the next slide, um, we'll talk a little bit more about the, the file manager uh, screen specifically. So um, Juno's file manager enables you to view, store, delete, import, and export files. Um, you can also um, add or re-record audio tags to your files. Um, and when you tap on the file manager icon, um, the files. Uh... Hey, Justine, you are coming in and out on your Wi-Fi. If you try turning off your camera, that might help. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I'll shut is, mine off to be safe for you as well. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so where was I? Um, 
so once you're you're in the the file manager um the the files they're going to be um sorted by the date they're captured um so your your files they're given a default kind of order um, from the date and the the icons represent file types um so the files that are containing um images um or the the first few words um are are what is displayed um, for that file um so the file the system file name is displayed and it shows the file type and the first um few words for that file um that's that cannot be changed from the Juno um so you're going to want to use an audio tag to name your files on Juno um because like I mentioned it gives uh your once you save that file it gives it an a default kind of um it shows the file type and you'll see this when we demo it um in it gives it uh, a, like first few words. So if you want to change the file name, you can do that from the computer, which we will demonstrate a little bit later in the webinar here. Um, so when you when you tap on the icon to view, uh, you'll see more information about it and that's where you can listen to your audio tag once you open that file and you can re-record it there's a little record um, option on the file so you can um, change the name or add a new name um, you know maybe you have an assignment and you could tag it as completed or you know a task or something um, you can say what your assignment is and then if you if you've done it um, that sort of thing so that's kind of a nice uh, thing so i'll let mike jump in here and tell more about the audio tags absolutely thanks justine um and i saw a question <clears throat> in the chat and we will answer those questions uh i see that some of the questions you asked we'll we'll get to those answers here in a couple minutes on the slides and then those that we don't get to, we'll definitely answer for you. Uh, so the audio tags are really nice. As Justine said, when you save a file on there, it's going to give it a default you know, name, basically. The Juno does that. So you don't have to worry about typing in a name or anything for the file. Uh, but the audio tag is helpful because of the fact that you can record a name for the file. So during the saving process, it'll automatically pop up and ask you, you know, do you want to save it as or add an audio tag? You'll hit yes to record an audio tag to that file. Uh, if you tap no, the Juno is just going to give it the default file name. And we'll show this afterwards in the demo too. I believe when I'm doing my portion of the demo, it will show this. Um, and the audio tag just makes it a little bit easier to keep track of the files that you've saved, especially if you're going to be using this a lot to save, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, you know, and upward files. Uh, so when you tap on that audio tag screen, you're then going to tap on the round circle, which is the record button, and you would then just say the file name. And then when you're done, you hit the stop button and you can hit play if you then want to listen to what you recorded, you know, as your voice. Uh, and you could also re-record the audio tag if you go into the file manager and tap on the file and press the record button again. So it's not locked at that point. You can always change that file uh, audio tag. But this is just another way to make it easier to locate what files you have on the Juno. Um, when you do transfer them to the computer, you can then change the names. And you'll see that when I do the, uh, the demo of that. Um, the stop button will come up on the screen. So when you hit record, 
the option, then you'll have an option to stop that recording so that once you finish recording the name of that file, you would then see the stop button. And we can demo that. We've done that in a couple of the past webinars as well. Uh, I think we've done that on the scanning one. Is that correct, Justine? When we did the scanning options, we went over how to add names to those files. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I saw that Betsy Ann put those prior webinars in the chat earlier. Um, it's definitely worth going and checking those out because we started out with the unboxing. We went into, you know, scanning. We went into, you know, customizing the Juno for an individual. So there's lots and lots of content out there on the Juno. And you're welcome. Next slide, please. And this is, I believe, one of the questions that we had a couple minutes ago in the chat. Uh, Ashley had asked, what file types can it accept? And this is a, a great, great question, one, and a great segue right into it, Ashley. So you were reading our minds. Um, so the Juno will support the following file types. It's going to do JPEG, uh, JPEG, PNG, BMP, WEBP, TXT, RTF, PDF, and a DOCX. So JPEG, a PNG, um, text file, rich text file, PDF files, docx files. Um, files that are scanned in. So if you, and those are the files you can transfer to the Ju Juno. Uh, if you take a photo with the Juno and store the file on the Juno to start with, those are VCB, which basically stand for Vespero Compressed Book Files. Um, you can transfer those over to your computer, but the computer is not going to open those up. So really, um, it's more so for transferring files to the Juno. File names can be managed and saved from the computer and then would be displayed in the Juno's file manager, which we'll show you. Um, again, you could take text files, rich text files, PDF files, and docx files, and from the computer, you're going to transfer those to the documents folder on the Juno. And if you have image files, which are BMP, JPEG, PNG, or WebP files, those would be transferred from the computer onto the images folder on the Juno. And it's pretty straightforward. I mean, if anybody, if any of you out there have ever plugged in like an external hard drive or plugged in a USB drive to your computer, when you plug the Juno in, you'll notice that it's going to show up uh, as basically a, an external device. And you would then have a documents folder and an images folder on there. And then you'd transfer those files over to the, um, the folder where they should be at. You know, again, as an image folder, you're going to bring over BMPs, JPEGs, PNG, and WebP, and any text-based documents such as PDFs, rich text, text documents, or docx, uh, you would transfer to the documents folder. And you'll see this um, in a little bit when we do the live demo. But it will work with a bunch of different file formats, which are nice. And then if you wanted to transfer between Juno, so maybe you have one student that is scanned in a bunch on the Juno itself, and you want to transfer those files to another Juno, you can do that as well. And that would be the VCB files that you would transfer between the Junos. Uh, if files are not copied into the correct folder, they're not going to display on the Juno's file screen. So that at the end is a, a on this slide is a bold note. So, you know, again, if you've got a PDF file and you put it into the images folder and not into the documents folder, the Juno is not going to recognize that. So you want to make sure that you have the correct files. Uh, so if you're taking notes or you're printing these slides out for later use, this is also in the documentation that comes with the Juno. Make sure that um, if it's not showing up, make sure that you go back and look and make sure that you put it into the correct folder with that. So I think the next question pops up. Uh, hopefully you were all paying attention because the next is a poll question. So over to you, Paul. All right. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Our question is, what types of files can be opened on Juno? Several choices. What types of files can be opened on Juno? Choices are PDF, DOCX, JPEG, TXT, RTF, or all of the above. What types of files can be opened on Juno? PDF, DOCX, JPEG, text, 
RTF or all of the above. All right, and while you are filling up that poll question, thank you for doing that quickly. Um, I don't believe any other questions came through the chat that we're not planning to address. But again, please uh, let us know if there's something you'd like to see perhaps during the demo. All right, so uh, folks, we didn't trip most of you up uh, with the question, what types of files can be opened on the Juno? 96% selected all of the above, uh, PDF, DOCX, JPEG, TXT, and RTF. And Mike, what was the correct response? That is correct. So it was all of the above. Um, you can do PDF, DOCX, and JPEG text files and rich text files. So yeah, great job, everybody. All right, so I think we're ready to move <clears throat> on. Um, yes, so I'll talk a little bit about opening files. Um, so you're going to tap on the file manager icon um, to display the, the file screen. And that's where you're going to tap on the icon of the file you want to view. And it'll kind of open in sort of a review kind of um, information screen. And then from there is where you you can actually open um, the document and you can change the magnification level and the colors and everything. Um, but fr from, from the information screen, when you first tap on the file, you have um, some options. You can export that file. You can return um, to the previous screen. That's where you can record um, the audio tag or listen to the audio tag. And they have a, um, an icon here where you can open that file up. And then you have another um, little icon for editing. And that's where you can tap on that to edit that file. So you get some, some options before you even jump into um, your file or your document that you're, you're looking at. Um, and then the next slide here is um, talking about how to edit the files. So if you chose to, to edit a, a file, um, you can you can change a file um, by tapping that edit button, um, and then you'll be in the edit screen, and you have four buttons for images. So if you're trying to edit a BMP, a JPEG, a PNG, or a WebP file, you're gonna get these options. Um, where you'll have uh, icons where you can mirror the image, you can rotate the image 90 degrees um, clockwise, or you can rotate that image um, back 90 degrees counterclockwise. Um, you can delete the file um, after um, confirming by tapping yes. So um, you'll get like a little trash can icon where you can tap that to delete the file if that's where you want to um, delete it from there. Um, and then for documents, like your text files, your RTF, um, PDFs, and DOCX files, you're only going to have that delete button option is available <clears throat> on that screen. Um, so basically, if you have a docx, a text file, a, a PDF, those kind of document files, um, you'll just have the, the delete button when you press the edit icon. But if you have if you have an image file, like a PNG, a JPEG, 
WebP, those um, files, when you open them and you hit that edit button, you're going to get more icons where you can actually rotate it um, and um, mirror the image, that kind of thing. So that's why it's important to, to save your files in the correct folders um, and it, because it's opening it as a specific file type on Juno um, and recognizing it. So if it if you put it in the wrong folder, it's not going to recognize it. So it's not going to show up. Um, so if that makes sense, we can uh, show that as well. <clears throat> and then I think we're ready for for storing files, Mike. Wonderful. Thanks, Justine. So. You can save up to 600 images, uh, I saw. And again, I think, uh, let me scroll back because I forget. I think it was uh, mm -hmm. Ashley Ashley that asked in the chat. So Ashley, yep. you were asking some great questions earlier. Um, the approximate storage on the Juno is about five gigabytes of storage space. So you can store about 600 images. Of course, that's going to be reduced um, if you add in any additional languages um, or obviously as you're storing files, that space will start to you know, be reduced. Um, you can easily go in and manage the storage by reviewing the, uh, excuse me, going into the Juno storage screen. And then you can tap the restore button to display the button bars. To get to that, you're going to go to the restore button, which to describe the restore button, it's when you first turn on the Juno. Um, you have the Juno on maybe in basic magnifier mode. On the bottom left-hand side, there's a little square with two arrows pointing out to the right. That's your restore button. So if you tap that, then get into the main menu button, go into the settings, uh, and then that's gonna display the settings menu. You're gonna then type, uh, excuse me, tap on the user settings, and that's gonna display the user settings menu. Then you're gonna tap on the storage icon to display the amount of storage in the Juno. Uh, the top line will show the storage that's available. You know, We recommend usually trying to keep it at at least one megabyte of available storage. That way, you know, just think about the same thing uh, with our minds, right? You're overloading, you've got a ton of information in your mind. You wanna keep a little bit of uh, random access and memory in there to keep things moving. Um, but a great amount of storage to store files. And at any time, you can obviously transfer files from the Juno to your computer. Or if you have a USB-C thumb drive, uh, so on the left-hand side of the Juno, there's a couple different ports. One of them is the USB-C port, and that is used to, one, charge the Juno. It's also used for the cable to connect to your computer, and it's also able to accept a USB thumb drive, which Justine will talk a little bit more about later. But um, that's where you could also plug in that USB thumb drive to transfer files to that to save storage or take things off of the Juno if you wanted to. And Next slide from storing files, if you wanted to delete files. So if you found that the storage is full, so your memory is full in the Juno, you would get an error message that will display when you attempt to capture any other images. That's gonna basically alert you that, hey, memory is full, what are you gonna do about it, right? So your options are then, as I mentioned, transfer files or go in and to, to, to delete some files to give you room to save new ones. Uh, if you wanna back up the files, before you delete them, you can copy those Juno files onto your computer. You can either delete files one at a time, or you can delete them all at once. You're unable to delete a file that is open at that time. So if you tap on the delete button at the bottom right-hand corner, after you confirm to delete it, that selected file that you have open is now gonna be removed, and then there would be an updated list of files displayed. To delete all of the files at one time, you're gonna tap the storage icon and that's gonna display the Juno storage screen. Tap the delete all button at the bottom of the screen. And then it's going to ask you to confirm to delete all data. And you're gonna tap yes to confirm that. And that would then delete all of the files on the Juno. I like that it does ask you to confirm before just doing it. Uh, so, you know, you're basically reminded, are you really sure you wanna go forward and delete everything? Um, so you do have that option, but again, 
If you want to save the files, just transfer them over to your computer or onto a USB thumb drive. Uh, and I saw somebody pop up and say, you know, you've got a decent amount of storage on there, agreed. Um, it doesn't have a recycle bin like your computer does. Uh, basically, that, that warning is, you know, delete all. And then it's going to ask you to confirm before going forward and doing so. Uh, kind of in a way, whereas your recycle bin is your safety net, right? Uh, that option that pops up that says confirm it is basically kind of your safety net. If you then hit yes and they're gone, they're gone. So be sure to transfer them over to your computer or onto a thumb drive to save them before you delete them all from the Juno's internal memory. And from there, I think now we have another poll question. So back over to you, Paul. All right, thank you, Mike. All right, we want to know now, have you transferred files onto or off the Juno using a USB-C flash drive or the included USB-C cable? Have you transferred files onto or off the Juno using a USB-C flash drive or the included USB-C cable? Yes. No, or I didn't know that Juno had the capacity to transfer files. So we've talked about it. Now we just want to know if you've had the opportunity to actually do it at this point. If not, hopefully what we've talked about will make this easier for you. But uh, we are curious to know if you've already previously given this a shot. And I was surprised to see, uh, I think going back to those Poll questions. Um, there was a large percentage, Paul, that have not done any file management within the Juno. So it'd be interesting to see what the answers are on this poll question. And speaking of playing along, we're going to uh, have our final webinar in December where we encourage you to bring a Juno. Uh, and we can answer some questions, anything that maybe we didn't cover in our Juno Tip Centric series or anything that's come up along the way. Um, but that'll definitely be a play along with us live uh, and practice these skills with us during the webinar. All right, for this poll, uh, we've had 100% answered. Thank you for, for filling out that poll. Uh, have you transferred files onto or off the Juno using a USB-C flash drive or included USB-C cable, just like in the opening poll? 84% of you said no, and 16% said I didn't know that the Juno had the capacity to transfer files. So this is definitely something, uh, a great benefit of Juno and something you'll want to check out on your own with a Juno, either now or in the future at our uh, final webinar in December. That makes me really happy that that 16% are learning something new by coming to the webinar and that we're able to, you know, share that knowledge because it's a pretty neat feature. Um, and you're going to get to see how it works. So copying files from your computer onto the Juno. We kind of hinted at this earlier. So you're going to attach the USB cable that does come with the Juno. So this cable does come with it. It's a USB to USB-C. Uh, so on the Juno itself, you have a USB-C port, and then below that, you have a mini HDMI port. You're going to use the USB-C port, which is the top um, the top port, basically, on the left-hand side. And then you would connect that cable. The other side of it is a regular USB cable that you would plug into your laptop or your PC. Uh, when you do that, you're going to then open up your file explorer and when you open up File Explorer, and we're going to walk through this, and I think, Betsy, and I'm going to need access to share my screen because I'll share my computer screen to show how that works. Great. Um, and when you're on there, the Juno is going to show up as a media device originally, uh, and then you're going to go to Juno, Internal Shared Storage, DCIM, and then Juno, and then you're going to paste the copied files into the proper folder. So as we mentioned earlier, you're going to have three folders in there, you're really going to only copy things into the documents folder or the images folder. And we can cover that again when we go into it. The Juno doc folder is going to be, that's the third folder that's in there. That contains the VCB files, which are multi-page books. Um, those files are basically documents and images combined. 
you can back these up, uh, but they're not going to open on the PC or web applications. So these are the files that you would transfer between Junos. These are files that are basically created on the Juno to begin with, as opposed to something that you're transferring from the computer onto the Juno. And I want to touch base on the fact that this is a nice feature because what if you're in the classroom or even at home, uh, you've got a PDF file or a text file or a docx file from Word that you want to basically uh, easily make accessible where you could have that file read aloud to the student. It's really easy to just plug the Juno into the computer, transfer that file onto their Juno, and then they're going to have a fully accessible uh, file that they can zoom into. They can change the color contrast on it. They can have it read out loud to them, uh, and they can do all of that right there on the Juno. So it's a nice, nice feature. And let's see. I saw a question come in. I wanted to make sure. Uh, can you copy and cut files to other folders like on a computer? Can any file have an audio tag? Uh, so on the Juno, any file that you have stored on the Juno, you can have an audio tag for it. And as far as copying and cutting files to other folders, uh, you know, files from the Juno are going to be those VCB files. So you could transfer those to your computer. You're not going to be able to open them up on the computer, but you could store them there and then transfer them back to your Juno or to other Junos. But anything from the computer, and we'll go into this right now, um, you can transfer from the computer onto the Juno. So if I could, um, I'm going to share my screen here. All right. We, I think we have. Oh, did we have a poll question? Poll question I'm sorry, we had a poll question first. Yeah, that's Thanks, right. We do. Me. Sorry, Paul. We do. No problem. <laughs> I was trying to jump the gun, Mike. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm sorry, Paul. Yeah, they, they, they came up real close together here. <laughs> they so. did. So how is Juno displayed on the computer when plugged in using the included USB cable? Documents, desktop, downloads, or file explorer, DCMI. How is Juno displayed on the computer when plugged in using the included USB-C cable? Documents, desktop downloads, or File Explorer DCMI. This one's a stumper too. I think this one's going to catch a lot of people. Yes, because remember, it's when you're going to those files on your computer on that left-hand column. How is it showing up? Mm -hmm. How do you find it? Take it to a min minute to answer that, and we will then uh, let Mike share his screen and do some demonstration for you. All right, we've had a hundred percent answer. You guys are on it today. How is Juno displayed on the computer when plugged in using the included USB-C cable? You had four options. No one chose downloads. A few folks chose documents. A few chose desktop. 83% chose File Explorer DCMI. Mike, what was the correct response? I am going to go with those 83% that chose that File Manager DCMI. Um, so great job on that. It's going to display as that. And then from there, once you click on that, that would then open up where you then would see the documents and um, documents folder or whatnot. So good job. So I am going to share my screen here and I just got to shrink that down. Give me a second. And all right, so you should all see my screen. Uh, I even cleaned up my desktop here for everyone so that it didn't look like my cluttered mess that it normally is. Um, so what I'm going to do is just to walk you through this, I have my Juno to my right side of my desk on my desk and I have the USB-C plugged into that top port on Juno. I'm now gonna plug in the other side to my laptop into a USB port. So it's now plugged in and it comes up as the Juno. So you're seeing now, and can you see that Betsy Ann on the screen? It shows Juno and internal- Yes, shared internal storage. shared storage. Wonderful. So I'm gonna then tap or double click on that internal shared storage. And you'll see there that you all answered that DCIM. That's where we're then going to click. 
And then we're going to click on Juno. And so you have Juno, DCIM. And now here are our folders. We have documents, images, and then the Juno docs. So just to recap, that Juno docs folder, you're not gonna really mess with that unless you're taking things from the Juno. So if I were to click on that, you'll see I have a couple of different files in here that are already stored on this Juno. Uh, those VCB files are not gonna be able to be opened on your computer. So those would just be if you were trying to save memory and you wanted to take those off of your Juno, you can do that. Going back here. So our documents and our images folder. Um, what I have on my desktop here is something called Juno files. I saved this just for demo purposes today. And if I open that up, I get another file manager here. And so now I'm doing a split screen in a way. On the right-hand side is my Juno internal storage. On the left-hand side is Juno files that are on my computer. So I have a PDF file, which is uh, just products that are available on Quota from Vespero. I'm going to open that file up just so you can see a view of that. And that is Vespero products, and it has four different products, the Jupyter, the Juno, the Video Mag, and software. So that's your visual of that with some QR codes on it. Uh, if I wanted to transfer that over, I'm going to transfer that over to the Documents folder. So I can right-click and copy that. This is basic file transferring. This is the same way that you would do things on your computer, but I can right-click and copy that. And then I can come over to my Documents folder on the Juno, right-click and paste. Or I could just drag and drop. So say the APH annual meeting software presentation file, which is a Word document. Um, if I wanted to transfer that, I could also drag and drop that over to the documents folder on my Juno. And then I have this great, if you have not checked this file out, if you go to the APH website and you go to the Juno uh, page, underneath documents, um, or it might be under downloads, Correct me on that one, Justine, but there's a file that Justine put together that's a great document. It's the Juno Skills Performance Checklist. I'm gonna open that up just to show you what that is quickly. So and I'll drop the link. Oh, thanks so, so much, Betsy Ann. This is an awesome document because this basically is a place where if you wanted to check your own skills, you can do so, but this can also be used as you're working with students to check and see and grade them on their level of mastery level. Uh, and see, you know, how how great are they doing with learning the different options on the Juno? Uh, you could give them this, or you could use this as a check checklist. So I'm going to transfer that over to my Juno, and I'm going to just drag and drop that over to my Documents folder on the Juno. If I want to confirm that these things got over there, I'm going to close that. I'm going to open up my Documents. And now you'll see in here, I have my APH federal quota thing. I have my Juno's, uh, Juno skills performance, and I have my annual meeting presentation. So all of those things have been moved over to the Juno. And now when I close that out, I can unplug my Juno USB. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here for a second. And what I'm going to now do is change my view over to my USB capture and turn my camera on. And I'm going to, I think, uh, Betsy, and I'll, uh, thank you. I was going to say, you'll have to spotlight yes. me. There. Thank <laughs> you. You were on it. You were reading my mind. Woo! So <laughs> I'm just looking at a, an image of a cell on my screen right now, and I've got some a fill in the blank on identifying what ones are the ribosomes and so on. So you'll notice here on the screen, on the bottom left, I have those two arrows. And if you remember, that was the restore button. When I tap on that, I then get all of my options on the screen here as far as your menu, your speech. Again, this was all covered in prior webinars that Justine and I did. Up on the top left, I'm gonna click my main menu and then go into file management, which is the top left, which is the file. And from there, I now have in here multiple documents that are text, as well as docx files. So you'll notice here the top left docx file is scrolling because I have the text enlarged, but that is the Juno skills performance checklist that we had. 
If I now want to open that, I can just tap on that and I can open that up. I can add an audio tag on the top right. I can also click on the open tab, which is the middle right hand option, which is the folder that looks open. And this is a large file, so it might take it a second to open, but that's going to open up that document. And here it is now on the screen. And again, this was a PDF. Um, oh no, excuse me, this was a Word document that I moved over to the Juno. And you get all of the formatting and everything. So you see how nice that looks on the Juno. And at any moment in time, if I wanted to click the play button on the bottom middle, I can click that and it would run the OCR and then read that file for me. If I click that restore button, it gives you an easy way. And we've gone over this in past things. Uh, this gives you an easy way to move through all of your pages. That was a 29 page file, by the way. So you saw when that was opening it, uh, it took a couple of seconds, really not that long for a 29 page file to be opened up on the Juno from you know, that, that file that we transferred from the computer. I can jump through any of those. I can then, um, as I said, have it read out loud to me. I'm gonna go back here and close out. So when I click on that restore option, top right is my X. I'm gonna close out of this. You can delete pages or I can exit out altogether. I'm gonna exit out altogether because I just wanna show you one other option in here. I wanna show you, Again, bottom left, restore, top left menu, main menu. I'm going to click on that file explorer again. So the other thing was that PDF file. So that PDF file, it says PDF. You'll notice here the name, because again, this saved that name that we transferred over from the computer. This wasn't something that we created on the Juno to begin with. So I'm gonna click on that PDF file and then on the, Right hand side, middle button is your file open. I'm going to click on that. It's going to open this document for us. And I see a lot of uh, chat things coming over saying, you know, great feature. I agree. It's awesome. So here is that PDF file. And you'll notice that that came over as an image. Uh, if I want this to run OCR on it, I could click on play and it would run the OCR on this and have it read to you. But this is a great thing to show you that you know, here you are. I mean, this is, a, this is a PDF file that we took over to the Juno and I'm able to open that up. I can zoom into that file and I can zoom in or out. I'm doing a pinch and zoom or you can press on the right-hand side. The Juno, don't forget, has those tactile buttons. There's an image of the Juno right there. So I'm pressing the yellow plus button right now to zoom in, zoom out on that. If I press on the yeah, blue buttons on the left-hand side, I can actually change the color contrast on this. So this is a PDF file that we're able to now customize and change and choose our different color contrasts and then come to true color. So pretty neat. I'm clicking on the restore button on the bottom left. I'm now clicking the top X button to close out of this file. And now we're back to our video magnification, uh, which is a live view of that document that I have on there. That's just a scanned document. And we can customize that, again, all the contrast. Um, anything that I missed on that, Justine, going through that demo as far as transferring from the computer to the Juno and vice versa? Oh, that, was, that was perfect. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. I just, yeah, I just love that. And you, you touched on this as well, that you can, you know, as the teacher, or, you know, the instructor <clears throat> working with students or clients or, you know, you can load up their, their Juno with, with all of their, you know, documents that they need for the day and the student, because it's so portable, they can just take it with them, their classes, and they have their, their files all ready to go um, that they can just tap on. Um, and easily locate, you know, their, their um, short story that they're reading in, you know, their literature class or, you know, anything that they're working on, um, you can have that readily available to the student <clears throat> and they can bring it up later. Um, 
it's just a really great a great way to I, I really like that this has the file capabilities to take files to and from um, the Juno to the computer. It's I just think it's a great function. I uh, couldn't and, agree with you more. Yeah. And it's nice that you have the option for the audio tags um, when they're on Juno. And then um, as you saw when Mike took those files from the computer onto Juno, it took all of those file names. So just like regular, you know, naming your, your file, um, you can, you know, name these specifically with um, names for your student to be able to find them easier. Um, so you can call it, you know, homework assignment number one, you know, or, you know, homework assignment um, <clears throat> worksheet for this or that, you know, you can name them so they, you know, can know what document to open for their class. Um, and you can, if the student's working on something, then they can name it with an audio tag on their computer. Um, the audio tags do not carry over though. So that's the, the only thing, it's kind of a separate, you gotta think of the, the audio tags are just on the Juno because like we mentioned the, the naming um, system on the Juno itself it just will default a name for that um, and you can't change it on Juno. So that's why you can apply the, the audio tag. So it makes it easier to find it on your file manager on Juno. Um, but then, you know, files you're taking from the computer, they're very easy to locate as well because you can um, see the file name in the, the large text or if you tap on that, it's gonna read you the <clears throat> the file name as well so and you know I um, want to stress as you said Justine you know you think about in the classroom setting you know so many files are pdfs already or you know mm -hmm. maybe the student um, is collaborating with a, another student on a word document it's easy to then transfer it over to this uh, maybe the student is presenting to the class and wants to use the Juno basically as their you know device to look at uh, and enlarge a document and present from the Juno. Uh, it's very easy to do. So yeah. I love that. Um, and I've just got up here on the screen right now, as you were talking, I had up just a, the PDF file and showing on the top right is that record button where I can record that audio file. And if I tap on that, I can add the audio tag and yeah. that record option comes right up in the middle. I tap that. And someone asked earlier about the stop button. That's where that stop button then would be once you do that. So I'm recording myself right now talking and then I hit stop and then I can play that back. And then I could also, you know, go back and we record it or not. Thank you. That's, that's great. Great demonstration. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Justine. So I will stop my share uh, and I think now we're jumping back over to you, Justine. Uh, so let me just stop my screen share here and stop my video, there you go. All right, um, so now I'm gonna show you all how you can use the USB-C flash drive. So <clears throat> I've got a couple slides here and then we can go over the demo. Um, so to import and export files um, using a USB-C flash drive, um, there's going to be a transfer button. And this is only going to show up once you insert the flash drive into Juno. Um, there'll be a button that shows up in that file screen in the bottom right hand corner and um, that's used to import and export files so you'll see that when i demonstrate it um, and then the next slide um, is just talking about uh, using that usb-c flash drive to copy um, files uh, that you want to import onto juno 
Um, so you, um, the same way that Mike showed you plugging in using the USB cable, um, it's the same for the flash drive. I'm just using a regular USB-C flash drive. Um, and you just plug that into the side of the Juno into the USB-C port. Um, that's that the top port on the left side. Um, and then from the, the file manager screen, you're gonna tap that import export button. Um, and then you're gonna hit the import button if you wanna import files um, onto the Juno. And you'll select the drive that you want to import the, the files from. And then you'll uh, select, uh, it'll show the folder that holds the files. Um, and then you'll tap the next button and then a, a confirmation message will display and you'll tap yes and the files um, from the folder will then be imported and available um, on your file screen. So I'm going to go ahead and show you all how to do this. I'm going to plug my Juno in. And while you do that, Justine, I was just going to say, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but on the APH website, uh, we have a recommended spot where they can find that uh, recommended USB-C drive, correct? Um, and if not, I was just going to say it's pretty basic. It's just a USB-C to USB uh, drive, and you can get that readily available, I would say, on Amazon. or. Yes, other. thank you. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, what I'm using is um, just a USB-C on one end and a USB-A on the other end. Um, so that's the one that we have linked to on the Juno uh, product page on the APH.org website. Um, if you search for Juno and go to the, the page um, and scroll down on that page, you'll find a recommended um, option that you can use with your Juno um, that you can just buy from anywhere. And um, yeah, it's just a reg like use it like a regular flash drive. And I just loaded up my flash drive from my computer. Um, I have a couple of documents. Um, I have the APH Braille rap song and some nursery rhymes um, and that I just- not showing yet, Justine. It hasn't shown up. It's just, um, you're showing from the Juno itself, right? Oh yeah, hang on at okay. my screen. Hang yeah. on, let me, um, let me switch my camera here. And then Betsy Ann will spotlight you again. And I, I dropped the link uh, to the Amazon site where you can buy this SanDisk Ultra to Rive Type C flash drive that's recommended. Thank you. Okay. All right, and we see the main menu. Okay, great. Um, so from here, I'm gonna go to File Explorer, the file manager. The file manager. And I want to point out too, I and think. Now I'm going to. I was just going to say, Justine, the color, if anyone notices the colors, yours is customized with uh, the yellow text on a black background. And mine was a different view. Mine was, I think, uh, white text. Uh, yeah, on a black background. And those are things we went over in prior webinars where you can customize the colors of your menus and things. So it's nice to know. Oh, Sorry. yes. Oh, no, you're fine. So if you notice. Um, now in the bottom right hand corner, transfer files. there's a transfer files button. Um, and if you press transfer files, press on that, you're going to get the, the transfer, um, mode screen. Export file to USB drive. See so on the left, you have the export, um, file 
So that's where you can take the files from Juno and put them onto the flash drive, or you can import the file from the USB drive. So I'm going to tap on the right hand one. And then it brings up the it brings up the flash drive. SanDisk USB drive. That SanDisk USB drive that Betsy Ann um, put the link in for. And then I'm gonna go to Juno. Juno. Previous directory. And we're just gonna hit the next button. Next Tap yes. yes. And this is where we get the confirmation that one file um, was imported in. And I think there were a couple other files on my flash drive too that were already on here. So it's just saying that those aren't going to be overridden. Let's see what it says. Files transferred successfully. The following files were not overridden. The RT Biopic JPG Nursery Rhymes Box. Okay. So. Um, it says one files uh, were transferred successfully. Um, so that's just, that must that's the APH bro rap song. And then the other two are on there. So okay. So now if I go to back to my files, you'll see the APH bro rap song is there. And my nursery rhymes are there. And my biopic is on there. And then I have a bunch of other files on here as well. Um, and like Mike mentioned, they are going to scroll if they have any, um, like more than one or two words, um, they're going to scroll um, for one because you have, you know, enlarged text in a limited space. Um, so to get all of that text in, it's just going to scroll like a ticker tape kind of thing. Um, but these ones at the bottom aren't scrolling because they their file names fit on the screen. So um, just to kind of show you how many files you can have on here at one time. And like I said, they show as the file type. Um, and then once you open that, it will show, a, let's see. Let's open my nursery rhymes. So you see now it's opened, um, like kind of in that review mode um and here you've got the record the audio tag in the top right you have the open open the file in the kind of the middle uh right of the screen and then you have your edit button in the bottom right and then on the left we've got that export, export. open anything um, you can export it directly onto your USB flash drive. Um, you can go back to your file screen. Um, or you can, so this is a docx. You can see at the top, the file type and name is at the top of the screen. Uh, nurseryrhymes.x. So I know because this is a docx, if I hit that edit button, um, all I'm going to see is that delete option. Edit the file. So you can delete that delete file. if you wanted screen. to from there. Um, but let's go ahead and open it. And you can see that it's done the different zones. Um, hang on, where is it? Let me open. Let me open my um, restore. And this opens up more of the menu options to navigate. So let's go start to the st start of the document. Title. And you can see the title at the top. My picture of a gingerbread man is on here. And then I have all my uh, nursery rhymes. 
and you can enlarge this and you can press um, which zone um, it will start reading from. Four little ducks went out one day over the hill and far away <laughs> mother duck said quack, 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 little wee wee back, three little puzzles. So I've got, um, you can increase your text size. Um, you can change your, your colors. And I think one of the things I wanted to point out too, when we did a demo a couple of weeks back at APH annual meeting, people were really excited about the different views that you have. And that's covered in one of the prior webinars as well. So you have that zone view, you have a ticker tape view, uh, you have a teleprompter view. And then I think the last one is uh, exact view maybe, um, but- Yes, and this is opened in the um, the document. Yeah, the teleprompter, so I call it document view. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the teleprompter. <laughs> and it's nice. And the other thing I wanted to yeah. point out too, Justine, is I don't know if everyone, everyone can hear it, but you have on your talking menus. And I think Beth mentioned that the menus look intuitive. Um, you know, they are intuitive, but there's also an option to turn on talking menus. So if you, for some reason, are just starting to use the Juno, uh, you know, as Justine's tapping on these menu buttons, it's actually auditorily telling her what those buttons are before she initiates it. So that's a nice option. And I see you're showing the different views, so. Yes. Um, so yeah, I just opened up the, the, the restore button again to open up my um, menu options for the screen. And in the, the right side um, is those different view modes that you're referencing. So you can change it to ticker tape, which is just one um, line at a time. Change zones, we're back in our um, zones here. Um, that's the image, what you were saying, just the full regular image. Yeah. That one. Um, and that's the teleprompter one. So that's the one I had it had it set on. Um, that's the one that I like. But you can choose any one of those um, views and it will um, it'll read in that that view. So you can just have it read it. One. Ducks went out one day over the hill and far away, Mother Duck said, page two and five, quack, 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 quack. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it says quack. <laughs> one day over the hill and far away, Mother Duck said. And Duck you can said, also adjust, uh, now when you do have the talking menus on, you have to double tap. So remember, kind of double tap, um, kind of like with a voiceover mm -hmm. on your phone. Um, the first tap tells you what, the function is and you tap it again to activate that. So you can change your volume and speech rate. Juno's new speech rate is Juno's new speech rate is set. And you can change the different um, voices. So my menu has a different voice um, to my reading voice. Um, so you can change that as well. Back. One little duck went out one day over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 <laughs> quack. But none of the five little ducks came back. Sad mother duck went out one day over the hill and far away. The sad mother duck said, quack, quack, quack. And all of the five little ducks came back. The grand old Duke of York. Oh, the grand old Duke of York. He had 10,000. Pause reading. Um, thousand men. Oops. I got to pause you. Okay. Um, changed as well. So that's um, let's see what we got. So that's how Close. Hi. Um, that's how you can kind of navigate um, to your files from the from the flash drive. Um, and was there nice any it's pretty straightforward? Yeah, it's so easy it to use the flash drive. I I literally just took 
you know, the documents like you would save on any flash drive from your computer um, with the USB A side of the flash drive, um, put the documents on there, and then took the USB C um, part of the drive and put that into Juno and just hit that transfer um, export import export button and then imported it right into my file uh, file manager Close. screen so check box without a check um, next screen it's pretty intuitive it was really easy to use um, the flash drive um, so I just take my little flash drive out here um oh I had another one in there the braille let's see if, Open. the braille wrap docs file nursery rhymes docs file apps braille wrap song so I had the braille wrap song and that was a doc x as well I'm trying to show you those different um Preview. we'll look at that one in a minute this file is an image um <laughs> Okay, that's of me and a colleague um, in our APH uh, shirts. <laughs> so if I hit the edit, so this is, I tapped on the file and it opened it. It has the title and the file type at the top of the screen. And you've got your open and edit options. So if I hit edit, you get your delete button down here, but you see you get all these other, you get all these other options. Rotate. So you can rotate the image. Rotate it 90 degrees counter. You can um, rotate it back. Mirror image. And now, now we're, I mirrored the image. So now we're on um, standing in the opposite directions in mirror image so <laughs> um so you get some more kind of editing um functions Previous. Open. and then if, if you open it you can zoom in um, restore button. so that's Hello. the image that's like the restore image File nursery rhymes image file A B R T. Oh, hang on, do it. Preview. Docs file apps Braille ramp song. Open file. And this one doesn't have um kind of any images. Open file. So it just shows the document type. Open file. And it's just a word document. And because I have mine set for that teleprompter view, that's how it's opened. Read document. American Printing House Braille Rap Song. A.1 is an A. Are you ready to play? An A is a dot one reach for the song. A.12 is a B. Braille is fun to me. B is a dot one two on the floor. Tap or shoe. A.14 is a C. O. Me. O. Me. C is a dot one four. Stomp the floor. A.145 is a D. Now listen carefully. A.145 is a D. Buzz like a B. Pause reading. Um, so that just shows you a fun little um, document to teach Braille. Um, Restore button bar. So that those are the documents I, I just put on there for my flash drive. Um, so does anyone Close. have any questions or anything you'd like me to demo i did see a question in there from ashley asking about capturing pictures of colored or glossy backgrounds uh, such as flyers brochures uh, and asking if those can be ocr'd and then read aloud and does it magnify and ocr things like food labels um, or labels on cans and it does um you know glossy stuff can be difficult sometimes but as long as you don't have lights glaring down, creating all that gloss, it will scan in um, flyers and brochures, and you can use it on cans and food labels. It has a couple of different, if you go over 
and watch some of the previous webinars, I think that was the scanning one as well, where we showed the different camera options, you know, as far as magnification, hobby view, distance viewing, and so yeah, that was we had one, we had a webinar um, specifically for all the camera functionality, all the different um, camera positions and all the different tasks you could use it for. Um, that was the Juno Tips and Tricks camera one. Um, the was, Juno yeah. Tips and Tricks OCR one, um, that one showed us capturing um, text, um, like a single page capture versus a uh, multi-page um, capture. Um, and the the multiple multiple page documents will show up as um, I think like you were saying, like those VCB um, files. Um, so yeah, we have we have webinars you can look back on um, for a lot of this stuff, but you want to make sure your lighting is good um, for this camera. Um, you can turn the lights on and off manually um, in your, um, you've got a reading line and reading mask on the right side. And then the top right, you've got the, turn off lights. you have the turn off turn on lights. and turn on lights. Um, you know, I don't actually have anything um, under my camera here, but. <laughs> Um, you can uh, turn those on and off. Turn off lights. Yeah, so that's nice to have that option as well. So if you do have something that yeah. is a shiny, glossy material, well, yes. you can test it and see, you know, do you want turn the lights on or off? off. off. Um, and then Linda Horton said, you know, why would you want a mirror image? That's just an option in there. You know, obviously, as Justine showed, you have photographs that you can download on this, which is another nice option because what if, mm -hmm. you know, your students have pictures that their friends are sharing and they might want to be able to enlarge them and zoom in, they can do so. And then they would be able to manipulate the image a little bit. Um, it's more so for just the viewing aspect. You wouldn't want to be mirror imaging. There's no reason to mirror image text or anything like that. No, that's what, yeah, it's just for um, image files. Um, and then if you're capturing, using the capture button and you're capturing um, text from like a book or, or a multiple page document, um, it will automatically rotate the image for you. Um, so you can use the Juno in portrait or landscape. Um, so you can use it either way to get the best um, capture of that document. And then it'll go ahead and once you OCR that um, text and scan it in, it'll it'll rotate it for you automatically. Uh, but there may be, maybe you took a picture in um, portrait mode or something and you want to rotate that or mirror image it, or, you know, you want to edit it, that image in some way, you can do that um, with those extra features. Great, so if no questions, I think we'll jump back over to Betsy Ann and Paul for the, right. back to the slide deck. Okay. So we are ready for our discoveries then today? We are. And we've learned quite a bit. This is just a small sampling of what we've covered today, but uh, you can rename a file to make it easier to find. In fact, we definitely recommend that you do that. Uh, use audio tags to quickly find a saved file. Very, very helpful thing to do for many, many reasons reasons. Up to 600 images can be saved on the Juno at one time. So that's really uh, quite a large number. Files can be transferred between a computer and the Juno using the included USB-C cable or a USB flash drive. Very important if you have things you want to store 
and just can't have the room to keep them on the Juno, or you want to just get rid of some of the clutter, great thing to do there is to move them to your computer. And you can always move them back or whatever you want to be able to do later on, but then you're able to hang on to those files if they're important to you. Let's talk about the pricing of the Juno. And this is one of the products that has a price for quota customers and a price for non-quota customers. If you are a quota purchaser, the price is uh, 1000 hold on, $1,177. And if you're a non-quota purchaser, it's $1,392. And finally, join us. We have one more webinar left in this Juno Trips uh, Tips and Tricks series. Easy for me to say. It is going to be called Juno Tips and Tricks, the final chapter. Now, no, that's not something that you need to to get prime video for, you don't need a streaming series for it. Nope, the final chapter you're going to help write because we're going to have you bring your questions, bring your Junos. Uh, if there are things that you've experienced that you wanna talk about, questions, problems, concerns, things that have just been really great, uh, things that, that, that have been uh, especially helpful for people you're working with or for you as a user. Uh, we want to know all of those things. We want to be able to demonstrate things that maybe we already went through them once, but you're having a question or a concern or you missed one of the webinars or whatever the case might be. Uh, on December the 15th at three o'clock will be that webinar. Now, there is not a link available for it yet. It has not been created in Zoom, but that will uh, stay tuned. If you get emails from us, you will definitely get an email when that is official and you can sign up. Um, again, please bring your Juno with you, bring your questions, uh, bring your concerns for the final chapter of this webinar series, December the 15th at three o'clock. All right, thank you, Paul. And thank you everyone for joining in today. Big thanks to our presenters, Mike and Justine. As Paul said, we only have one more time to catch this dynamic duo in our Juno Tips and Tricks series. So please join us on the 15th for our final chapter.